Welcome to regionalanesthesia.com. Landmark-based nerve blocks are blind techniques that utilize surface anatomy landmark to identify the position, one, to insert the needle, two, choose the direction of needle insertion, and three, the plane within which to redirect the needle if needed. Successful final needle position is confirmed by eliciting paresthesia or muscle contraction. Best landmark-based nerve block techniques rely as much as possible on fixed palpable bone reference points that are consistent position points between all patients. One should avoid landmarks that are subject to inter-individual variation or to uncertain interpretation. A regional anesthesia standard hand size is 7.5 centimeters across four fingers. Some blocks use a portion of that distance, such as three fingers or two fingers breadth. We are going to do a single shot nerve stimulator guided femoral nerve block. We're going to use the 4-3 finger surface landmark method. The femoral nerve passes into the leg posterior to the inguinal ligament and lateral to the femoral artery. The nerve also lies in an entirely separate facial compartment to that of the artery. It is for this reason that periarterial nerve block technique most often fail to block the femoral nerve. The femoral vein lies medial to the artery. The femoral nerve branches very widely from lateral to medial after entering the leg. The branches then also divide into a deep division group and a superficial division group of nerves. Performing the nerve block too distal can result in only one division being blocked and not the other. The deep division is usually the surgically preferred most critical division to block. Stimulation of the deep division results in a quadriceps muscle twitch. Thus, never accept a sartorius twitch for identifying the femoral nerve. Injected drug might then not spread to the more important deep division. Stimulation of the superficial division results in a sartorius muscle twitch. A nerve block of the deep division alone will fail to anesthetize the skin over the anterior thigh of the knee, while a nerve block of only the superficial division may fail to block the knee joint capsule and the quadriceps muscle division group of nerves. Performing the nerve block too distal can result in only one division being blocked and not the other. The deep division is usually the surgically preferred most critical division to block. Stimulation of the deep division results in a quadriceps muscle twitch. Thus, never accept a sartorius twitch for identifying the femoral nerve. Injected drug might then not spread to the more important deep division. Stimulation of the superficial division results in a sartorius muscle twitch. A nerve block of the deep division alone will fail to anesthetize the skin over the anterior thigh of the knee, while a nerve block of only the superficial division may fail to block the knee joint capsule and the quadriceps muscle. Best femoral nerve block success results from performing the nerve block just below the inguinal ligament before all of this extensive nerve branching occurs. Both nerve divisions are then always blocked. The groin crease has no relationship to the inguinal ligament. In young thin individuals, the groin crease will be 2 cm distal or cordad to the inguinal ligament. However, in older, flabby, fleshed persons, the groin crease can be up to 20 cm distal to the inguinal ligament. Therefore, do not use the groin crease as an all-patient ages landmark when determining the optimal position at which to inject a femoral nerve block. The femoral artery is equally a poor reference point for the relative position of the femoral nerve. The artery is notoriously hard to identify with palpation, even with experienced hands. Enlarged superficial arterial branches in that region can be mistakenly identified as the femoral artery when using just palpation technique to locate the femoral artery. The only consistent superficial reference points to identify the femoral nerve position are two bony prominences, the anterior superior iliac spine and the pubic tubercle. They mark the anchor points for the inguinal ligament. Also, the femoral nerve has a remarkably consistent position relative to those two bony reference points. Those bony points are also not subject to variation between individuals. Mark on the skin the anterior superior iliac spine, pubic tubercle, and the inguinal ligament between them. Next, place one index finger firmly onto the superior aspect of the anterior superior iliac spine. Then place four fingers of the other hand immediately medial to that index finger on the anterior superior iliac spine. Mark the skin with a pen immediately medial to the four fingers and two centimeters cordate to the marked inguinal ligament. Next place the finger of one hand onto the pubic tubercle. Pushing hard through the overlying pubic fat and onto the pubic tubercle usually causes the patient to feel deep visceral discomfort. That confirms the accuracy of the bony point identified. 
Then mark off a point three fingers to lateral of the finger on the pubic tubercle. If you then mark the skin immediately lateral to the three fingers and two centimeters cordae to the marked inguinal ligament, it should coincide with the first skin point marked. If the two points do not coincide, review your bony landmarks. The most common mistake is misidentifying the anterior inferior iliac spine as the anterior superior iliac spine, especially in thin patients. If severe obesity and excess very mobile skin also makes marking the anterior superior iliac spine challenging, it is acceptable to only use the pubic tubercle as the single surface landmark reference point to predict the position of the femoral nerve. No patient is ever too obese to not be able to palpate the pubic tubercle, even if pressing hard and deep is required. We identify the anterior superior iliac spine over here. We identify the pubic tubercle over here. We join the two together with a line to indicate the position of the inguinal ligament. Over here, I mark his groin crease. In older patients, the groin crease can be 15 centimeters further down the leg. So if you use the groin crease as a landmark, you will end up doing a mid-thigh femoral nerve block that will be very incomplete in some patients. For the 4-3 finger landmark femoral nerve block, place one finger on the anterior superior iliac spine. Measure all four fingers of a standard nerve block hand towards medial, two centimeters quarter to the inguinal ligament. Mark the needle insertion. Verify the landmark by measuring all three fingers to medial from the pubic tubercle. After sterilizing the skin, use a sterile 50 millimeter nerve stimulating nerve block needle. Insert the needle to perpendicular through the skin at the mark point. Set the stimulator to 1.2 milliamps current output and a fast 5 Hz twitch rate. Advance the needle deeper while feeling with sensitive fingers for two fascial pops and observe the quadriceps muscle for muscle twitching. And now withdraw the needle tip too close to the skin and re-advance it. I explore an arc in a plane at right angles to the femoral nerve direction. I first explore towards lateral, as that is the very safe side. On the first readjusted needle direction, we find the femoral nerve. Dial the current down to establish the minimum stimulating current. Here it is 0.1 milliamp. All the procedures in this educational material were filmed on healthy volunteers receiving actual needle insertions. No drugs were injected, no patients were used. Go to www.regional-anesthesia.com to find more regional anesthesia teaching materials.